Okay, there we go. Paradise is roll. So we're doing the gambling thing. We'll do a little probability here. Paradise is roll. Find the probability rolling a sum, not more than five. So throughout this section, we're going to do eight four and much as of eight five as we possibly can. As probability, um, watch for the words probability versus odds. Those are different. They're going to say probability for like 10 problems in a row, and then they're going to start mixing in the word odds. So you've got to watch for that. It's a slight difference, and I'll talk about how you handle it. So anyway, this one's just probability. So find the probability of rolling a sum not more than five. How do we figure that out? You're going to roll two dice. You're playing Monopoly or whatever, and you want a sum not more than five. How oh, in the world? Remember what we did for two dice last time? We did the big old table thing. So that's, that's where we need to go again. I'm not making that very clear there. So big old table. And then we're going to break it into a six by six array. So this is what we did the last problem before the break. So, and I'm going to put in the different things that can happen when you roll two dice. You can get a one and a one, or a one and a two, or a one and a three, or a one and a four, or a one and a five, or a one and a six. Does that make sense? You can get one on the first die, and the numbers one through six on the second die. Those are six different things that can happen. Or you can get a two on the first die and a one. A two and a two, a two and a three, a two and a four, a two and a five, and a two and a six. Those are six other things that can happen when you roll the two dice. That makes sense? Or you can get, let's keep going, a three and a one, a three and a two, a three and a three, a three and a four, a three and a five, three and a six, or a four and a one, and a four and a two. So this table, you're going to want to put this on your 3 by 5 card for our exam next week. 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6. There it is. There's 36 boxes there. 6 by 6 array, right? 36 different things that can happen when you roll two dice. So there's all the things that can happen when you roll two dice. Now, they're talking about the sum, the sum, the sum, the sum, meaning what the dice add up to be. That's what we care about like a monopoly or something or craps, right? You care about what the dice add up to be. Remember I, um, last time I showed you that, that the sums are along the diagonals. So in other words, this is a sum of two. This diagonal is a sum of three. This diagonal is a sum of four. Do you see what I'm saying? Meaning on this diagonal, if you get a one and a three, or a two and a two, or a three and a one, then it'll add up to four. Any of those will add up to four huh? on that diagonal. The diagonals hold the sums. Or this diagonal, the sum is five. Huh. This diagonal, the sum is 6. The main diagonal right through the middle, the biggest, longest diagonal, the most likely sum, is 7. There's more ways to get 7 than any other sum. Keep going. Sum 8. Sum 9. Sum 10. Sum 11. And then lastly... Box cars, they call it sum of 12, 6 and 6. Okay, so there's all the different sums for the dice. Now, they're saying for part A, sum not more, not more than 5. Not more than 5. If it's not more than 5, what is it? What is it? five or less, 
right? Say, it's not more than five, well, then it's five or less, right? So where's the sums? Where's the sums that are five or less? Here, 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 here. Sum of five, four, three, or two. Uh -huh. So sum of five has how many possibilities? How many different ways are there to get the dice to have a sum of five? Ten. Sum of five? Oh, how many? How many? You can yeah, get four ten. and one. That's mm -hmm. one way you can get your dice to be a sum of five, or you can get three and two, three on the first dice, two on the second, or you can get two on the first dice, three on the second, or you can get one on the first dice, four on the second. There's four, yeah, four. different yeah. things that would result in a sum of five. Yeah. Does that make sense? There's four different ways to get a sum of of five. How many ways are there to get a sum of four? Three different ways. How many ways to get a sum of three? Two different ways and a sum of two. Only one way to get a sum of two. Snake eyes. A one and a one. Does that make sense? How I'm using that? So add those up. How many ways are there to get a sum of five or less? Add those up. Four plus three plus two plus one. Ten out of the 36 different things that can happen. Of the 36 different things that can happen in this whole array, when you roll two dice, 36 different things that can happen. Among those 36 things, 10 of them are a sum of 5, 4, 3, or 2, meaning 5 or less, meaning not more than 5. 10 out of 36. Reduce that like any fraction. That divide top and bottom by 2. 5 eighteenths. That's the probability. When you roll two dice, that's the probability you're going to get a sum of five or less, meaning not more than five. So if you're playing Monopoly, you're rolling the dice, you're thinking, I, I really need a sum. I, I really can't, I, I can't, I want it not more than five. Your chances are five out of 18, less than one-third, huh? Right? Five-fifteenths would be one-third. That's lower than a one-third. You can get that a decimal in your calculator. You want to hit five divided by 18. Somebody got that? What is that? What's five divided by? Or I got two. I got a calculator. 5 divided by 18, that's a 27% chance, but 28, rounds about 28%. There's about 28% chance that that's going to happen. This is what I do whenever we play family games with dice. I'm always calculating the percentages, which annoys some people. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what families do, right? All right, so, um, yeah, I'm always like, oh, there's da -da -da, this chance, that chance, you know. Anyway, so, makes sense there. How we did that one? So whenever they talk about rolling two dice, you want to pass what you want to have right on your three by five card. That's six by six array, six by six array, with all of those on it. Can you answer question B? So that was all question A. Question B: Some not less than six. Try that one. So I'll squeeze it in up here. Question B: Not some. Not, not less than six. So first say to yourself, if it's not less than six, what does that mean it is? If I said I rolled some dice, I'm looking at it. Hey, guys, it's not less than six. What's that mean? Six and above. If it's not less than six, it's six or above. Right? Six or seven or eight. All the way to 12. Huh. It's 6 or above. If it's not less than 6, it's 6 or above. So you got to add up all the probabilities for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. See what I'm, see what I'm saying there? So how many for 6? Yeah. There's five plus six back down to five. Yeah. Or nine, or ten, or eleven. Or I'll write them all out. So the different sums have different possibilities. Four, three, two, one. Add that up. Was it sixteen twenty six? Reduce it, 13 eighteenths. 13 eighteenths. Does that make sense? 
how I did that. How we doing? Am I making sense? Am I doing the Charlie Brown voice up here and nothing's coming through? Am I making sense? You know what? You know what we could have done to save a lot of time, guys? A and B are opposites. Do you see that? A and B are opposites, right? If your sum is, well, what was what was part A? Five or less, right? Five, four, three, two, or one. And what was B? Not less than six. Well, that's what five, four, three, two, one is. Less than six. So B is the opposite of A. B is not A, right? B is not less than six. What was A? Five or below. So you could have just said, look. If, five out, if these are opposites and this is 5 chances out of 18, then the rest is 13 out of 18. Done. I've done that too. How about part C? You want to try part C? Can't even read part C. What does that say there? The sum. Oh, the sum is between 6 and 11. Oh, they put an important word in there. Exclusive. Do you know what that means? Yeah, to, if something is excluded, what does that mean? It's out, right? It's removed from. So whenever they tell you between 6 and 11, X, they mean exclude the endpoints. They mean don't count 6, don't count 11. Only count 7, 8, 9, and 10. If they say inclusive, that means include the endpoints. So exclusive, exclude 6. So when they say between 6 and 14, or 6 and 11, they don't mean you can be 6, and they don't mean you can be 11. Those are excluded. The endpoints are excluded. You can be 7, 8, 9, or 10. So what's the chance the sum is 7, 8, 9, or 10? You're playing Monopoly. You're hoping your friend's going to land on Park Place or Boardwalk or whatever your properties are. 7, 8, 9, or 10. That's what you're hoping for. What's the probability of 7? How many, how many different results give you a probability of sum of 7? Six, and then eight, five, and then nine is four, and ten is three. What's that, ten, eighteen? Out of thirty-six, reduces to be a half. Half the time, you're going to get a sum of six, seven, eight, or nine. Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, I should say. Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Half the time, when you roll two dice, you're going to get a sum of six, seven, eight, no, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Does that make sense? See how we're figuring all those out? Probability. So I'm going to leave this one, if that's okay. Spend some time working with that table. That, that'll certainly be one like that on the test. All right. All right. So a uh, produce buyer for a juice company is... Um, he makes a choice of New York, Washington, or imported apples, and he also chooses fancy, fancy, extra fancy, or ungraded. If each each option has equally likely chance of being selected, equally likely, find the probability ungraded. The answer is already there for you, one third. Why? Because there's only three kinds. Every apple is either going to be fancy extra fancy or ungraded. So the chance it's ungraded, one third. Now you might keep thinking, yeah, but what about New York, Washington? Well, that's where it's from, not its quality. That's a different characteristic completely. That makes sense? So, so you know, as far as, as, far as its um, quality, it's going to be one of these three. Fancy, extra fancy, or ungraded. The chance it's ungraded is one third. Notice we're still doing probability. You know probability is always the number in favor of what you want over the total. Huh? One third. Is that good? What if, what if they said, what's the chance it's either ungraded or extra fancy? What would have been our answer? Two thirds. Because then there's two things we want out of three total. huh? Right? You're comfortable with that, right? Okay. Still got to move it. Okay. Um, eight professors, seven associate, ten assistant, ten instructors. If one faculty member is randomly selected, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So how are we going to do this? 
Um, what's the probability of choosing a professor or an instructor? So you want the number in favor. It's still probability, notice. We'll change to odds in a minute. But we're still doing probability. And probability is the number in favor over the total. I think you know that. I think you sense that. All right, so what's the number in favor? How many, like you're going to grab a professor at random. How many, how many professors? How many instructors? Eight professors and ten instructors over the total. Whatever eight plus seven plus ten plus ten is, right? So that'd be 18 over 35. That doesn't reduce, does it? I don't think. I think that's it right there. Does that make sense? If you're going to grab, if you're going to um, grab a faculty member at random, the chance you're going to get a professor or an instructor is 8 plus 10, 18 out of 35 total faculty members. Members. Good. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so, yeah. So this is Venn diagram. We did some of those, right? I, I hope you made it through that Venn diagram homework. This will be easy for you if you did, because it's kind of like the same thing. So how do we do a Venn diagram? What does it say? Probability of Z, P of P of Z just means probability. So we're just, we're just doing probabilities. It's the same thing, though. Probability of Z is 0 0.40. 0 0.40. Now, Z, so I'm just going to put Z is 0 0.40. And that is wrong. That's the mistake I often see students make. Why? What's wrong about that? That's what they said. Z is 0.40. That means all of Z is 0.40. I don't know just this section. Maybe, maybe this is 0.30 and this is 0.10. Somehow both of them together have to make 0.40. But I don't know which one's which. I just know both of them together make 0.40, huh? So don't make that mistake. Just keep re We can't do anything with that 0.40 right now. Keep reading. Y is 0.38. Again, there's two sections for Y. I don't know. Somehow together they make 0.38. But this I do know. This will help me. What is that UZ... Overlap is point, was that 16? What, where does that mean? Middle. That's the very middle. That's the overlap between the two. Yeah, so that's where I can start, right? That's point 16. So start there. The overlap. Now work backwards. Now say, okay, Z is point 40. So this, so to find, so Z means these guys together must make point 40. So you take 0.40 and subtract 0.16, and you get, what's that, 0.24? So that's got to be 0.24, so those two together make 0.40 now. Does that make sense, what I did there? And then for this other one, y is 0.38, so this is going to be whatever, 0 0.38 minus 0 0.16 is 0.22. Thank you. 0.22 goes right there, so that y all together is 0.38. See how that's working? Now, how can we find out here? Because that's the fourth region, right? We have four what we call basic regions, four separate regions. How do we find outside of the two circles? What do they have to all add up to be? One. One, huh? Right? So point twenty-four for probability, right? If I said the chance of rain tomorrow is 70%, what's the chance it won't rain? 30. You know that because it has to add up to 100%, right? Which is 1.0 decimal, right? 100% is 1.0 decimal. So add these up. Is that 12, 4, 6, 0.62? So then 1 minus 0 0.62 is 0.38. This must be 0.38 out here. Right there. That adds up to 1.0. We good? That's how we find the outside. We add them all up and subtract from 1. Good. So now we're ready for their questions. What are their questions? 
Question one. Z prime overlap Y prime. What is prime? What does that prime mark mean? It means not. Remember that from the other sections of homework? So not Z overlap not Y. Where is not Z overlap not Y? It's that point 30A. That's exactly what it is out here. If you're out here, you're not in Z and you're not in Y. Huh. Make sense? You're not in both circles. Remember, overlap means and, right? You're not in Z and you're not in Y. You're in the outside the overlap. All right, question B. It's right here. Uh, Z prime union Y prime. Ooh, it's getting a little tricky. Z prime union Y prime. Is that your lock game? I don't think so. I think I unlocked it. Should we check it for me, see if it's unlocked? Is it sticking? It must be, somebody gets a funny position and sticks. Thanks, guys. Um, all right, so um, let's do the circles. Um, so then this is Z and this is Y. Let me just help you with that. So Z prime. Think, think about, let me make that a little bigger and cleaner. Think about the four sections we have. Think, think about this Venn diagram in terms of four sections. Okay, so we have this is one section, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth. Four separate sections, right? Think about the four sections as we go here now. Okay, so what is the Z prime area? Which sections are not in Z? Here and here, right? They're not in the confines of circle Z. You agree with me? What are the not Y sections? Well, here and here, right? Not Y. So, and then what does the unite do? It means unite them all. Remember union? It means unite them all together. You can do this or that. Either one. Everybody come play softball. Unite them all together. So that means this with this. And these, these, these two guys are saying the same thing. They're both saying the outside. You don't need to put two separate dots. So you're saying you want this, you want this, and you want the outside. So add up those three sections. Does that make sense? Over here, it's point twenty-four. So, wait, what is it? Yeah, point twenty-four. It's point twenty-two, and it's the outside point thirty-eight. What do those add up to be? 50, 60, 84? Point eighty-four. Everybody see how I came up with that? I probably did too much scribbling on this thing. Let me put it back the way it was before I scribbled it up. Z, Y, so we had this section, point 24, this is 16, point 22, point 38. We ended up saying this and this is not Y, and this and this is not Z. So we took this one, this one, and this one, and added them up. Does that make sense, how I came up with that? Now, I know this gets confusing. You've got you to gotta really spend some time with this. This will not come to the casual. It will come to those who give it time. If this is turned upside down, how would that change the question? It's overlap, but careful, careful. It's the overlap of what they've said, not of, not of whatever we want to overlap. It's the overlap of not Z and not Y. Right, so what is not Z? Here and here, right? Aren't those the confines outside of Z? What is not Y? Here and here. Aren't those the two areas outside? And where do those dots overlap? Where do you find dots, two dots in the same region? The outside only. 
that would be 0.38. Do you see the difference? Overlap means just that. It means overlap. you got to be in both regions. Huh? But they didn't give me overlap. They gave me union. But I'm just making you aware. On the test, it could be the other way. Union means I just put them all together. Overlap means only where they both occur. Right? See the difference? Let's do part C. Part C, kind of running out of room. Go over here, I guess. So part C is, um, or do we just do C? Oh, no, it's a little different, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's being tricky. All right. Part C is um, Z bar union Y bar. No, not, it's just Y, not Y bar, huh? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Here's Z, here's Y. Numbers are point twenty four, point sixteen, point twenty two, point thirty eight. Okay. So where is Z bar? So first off, put dots in the Z bar areas. Where's Z bar? Z bar means not Z territory. So that's here and here. We good? Those two regions are not in circle Z. Does that make sense? Everybody see how those are not in circle Z? Now, it's saying circle Y. I'll do a different color here. Which area or areas are in circle Y? This one and this one. Aren't those two regions in the confines of circle Y? I'm not talking about Z right now. Okay. Right? Like if I said, you can apply for this scholarship if you've been to the moon or you grew up in Fresno. Can you apply? I haven't been to the moon. Grew up in Fresno. I'm good. So or means I don't care about the other condition. As long as I meet one of them, I'm in. Right? That's, that's the logical meaning of that U. Everybody see that? Right? So, so when I do that second part, yes, but, but that's a good question. I want to make sure everybody, because that, that's a question I get a lot. So I want to be really clear with you. When you're focusing on one part of it, don't let the other part confuse you. Right? When it's saying why, you forget about all the world, and you just look at why. You say, where's why? Boom, boom. I don't care whether it has Z, doesn't have Z, has a funny monkey, or doesn't. Why? Boom, boom, boom. Those two spots, right? Just hone in. You've got to be kind of tunnel vision. You've got to hone in on what it's saying. And this one says, not Z. So that was the two blue dots, right, that are not in Z, right? Cause, because here is Z. So what are the two areas not in Z? Here and here. Huh? Everybody seeing that? So you've got to be tunnel vision when you're doing this. Now, put it all together. U means unite them. All the dots anywhere. Everybody's in, right? If it was overlap... What if it was overlap? Which region would I take if it was overlap? What reg among those four regions, which region has both dots occur? Point only the point 22. If they did overlap, I would only take the point 22. Huh? But they said, everybody's in. You're not. Everybody. So that would be the point 16, the point 22, the point 38. Does that make sense? Yeah. U means unite. Everybody unites. So we add them all up. So it would be... Point sixteen plus point twenty two plus point thirty eight, whatever that is, sixty seventy six. I think. Sixty seven. Yeah. Good. Good to there. And finally, part D. So we get Z and Y. All right, try, try this, and this one's going to be Z overlap, not Y. So put two dots in the Z territory, two dots in the not Y territory, and keep only the overlap. I'll put in the numbers here. 24.16, 0.22, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38, 0.
Here's, here's circle Z. What regions are in him? This one and this one. Good so far. That's just Z. Don't worry about anything else when you're doing Z. Just tunnel vision to Z. Those two regions are in the confines of circle Z, right? Now, not Y. Well, here's Y. So what regions are not in Y? This one and this one. Right, aren't those two not in Y? And then finally, they want the overlap. They only want regions that have both dots. What regions have both dots? Only this region, point 24. If they said unite, I would take all the dots anywhere. I'd add up all the numbers with dots anywhere. Is that making sense? So that's the kind of thing you need to do again later. If you really want, if you just see this once and think, I think I got it, and then take the test next week, you will not get it. You will miss it. And you'll think, I understood it in class. And I'm telling you, so did I. But I went home and did homework, <laughs> and I would go, what did that teacher do? And I would do it again and again and again, and I would not fool myself. I would pull out a new version. I would go in the book, and I would try an even one. And then I would try it, right? Otherwise, you're not going to lie to yourself. You've got to test yourself. You have to practice the exam. Make sure. Don't fool you. This, this, this will slip. I say this a little more serious tone because this slips by a lot of people. The next exam is hard. Probability in general is a hard concept. I grew up, I'm a weirdo. I'm, I'm a nerd, I'm sure, in this area. I grew up, I loved baseball. It was my life. And, and I was good at the math thing. So I had baseball cards with statistics and I rolled dice and I made probability tables and I, I did all that. That was just my lifeblood from the time I was really in elementary school. I was dealing with probabilities. So they're just like second nature. It was shocking to me when I first started teaching and people didn't know what the chance of flipping two heads in a row in a coin is. I'm like, really? I, mean, I knew that when I was 10. You don't know the chance of two heads in a row? It's a fourth, half and a half. Fourth, of course. Or the dice chart with the six by six. I did that, but I'm weird. I know. My, none of my friends were out playing and I was in rolling dice in my room. So I'm a little strange. <laughs> so, so I know this is hard for other people. So... So let me help you. You've got to spend some time with this. You've got to spend some time. Think to redo these. So do this homework problem and then re ask it for a new one. It'll give you more. You've got to practice. It won't come without practice. Oh, these are hard. These little union things that take practice. Get in the hang of them. All right. We got to. Um, okay. So this one's a little harder. Um, they're given a Z, Y, and the union. That's too bad. Let me show you. Why that's too bad. Z, Y, and the union. Okay, so before we can even think about getting to the questions, notice I don't even look at these questions over here until I first have all the numbers in the chart, right? We need all the numbers in the chart. So how am I going to get the numbers in the chart? Well, can I, what can I do with the Z is 0.40? Can I do something with that? That's here and here, together making 0.40. I don't know which one's which or uh, what, what they are, uh, y is 0 0.35, that's this and this. I don't know either one. So, okay, what about this? The union is 0 0.58. What's the union? No, 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 this, this would be in the center, overlap. That's not, what, I'm asking what it's saying right here. Union, not overlap. That's, that's why this one's harder. The last one was easy. They gave us the, the overlap. So bang, middle, boom, boom, we're up. We had it. Yeah, the union means all three of these sections, doesn't it? Anywhere there's any dots adds up to 0.58. What do I do with that? See how I'm in a little bit of trouble here? That's a good idea. See how this one's more difficult? But divide by three? I don't know those are all equal, though. Right? I can't do that. All right, so everybody see the problem first off. You don't appreciate that there's a problem. The, the answer won't make any sense. So that makes sense. Everybody see the difficulty, how this one's harder than the last one. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Look at my dots for a minute. If I add up this plus this plus this plus this, I get the middle twice, don't I? If you add up Z plus Y, what you really get is is the middle twice, don't you? So, 
what you could do. And, and, and remember, the union, the union is all three sections, right? So if you're getting the middle twice, right, if I add up Z and Y, 0.40 and 0.35, that's Z and Y. That's the middle twice, right? Isn't that the middle twice? You with me? Because it's Z, which is this and this, and it's Y, which is this and this. When I add up 0.40 and 0.35, I'm getting this and this, 0.40 and this and this, 0.35, I got the middle twice, so I need to subtract out the middle, call it x. I don't know what it is. Call the middle x. Each of these is x, I'm saying. Right? So if you, so if you take, well, here, let me read this way. So if you take 0.40 plus 0.35 and subtract out the middle once, you'll only have the middle one time like you should, that will equal the union. Point fifty eight. Did I lose you? Point fifty eight is these three sections added up, right? It's the union. They're telling me point fifty eight is the union. So point fifty eight is the is the middle only once. All right. So I'm I'm probably confusing. I'm trying to give it to you logically which is always best. If you can get to where it makes sense to you, that's the best. But it doesn't always, it didn't for me either. When math teachers said stuff, a lot of times it went right over my head till, till I was working on it for a month and then it would start to make more sense. But, so let me give you a formula. Even if that didn't totally make sense, let me give you a formula. That's all to say, here's a formula. Z plus Y minus the overlap will always equal the union. You can just use that. That's what I just logic you through. There's the formula. If that logic didn't make a lot of sense, just write that golden ticket on your golden ticket, on your 3 by 5 card for the exam next week. Definitely want to have that. I'm sure I will give you one problem on the exam where I'm telling you the overlap on the union, and you've got to do this little tricky formula. So the overlap is Z and Y added together but subtract out the middle because you counted the middle twice. That's what I just led you through logically. Keep thinking on that. It'll make more sense over time. So what does that mean? So that means 0.40 plus 0.35 minus the overlap, which I don't know what it is, is the union, which is 0.58. So that's a little formula by which I can find the overlap, the middle. I can use that formula to solve for the middle now. So that's 0.75 minus the overlap is 0.58. Do you see that? And now subtract 0.75 from both sides minus the overlap is something. 10, 17? So divide both sides by negative 1. So the overlap is 0.17. Positive. That makes sense there? So write that golden formula on your 3 by 5 card and, and know that it's to be used whenever, when, when, when given the U and you cannot find the overlap. That's when you use that formula. When they're giving you a union and you're having trouble finding the overlap, the middle, this middle section right here, right? That's the formula you want to use. So I just found the middle. Now it's going to all fall like a house of cards. Now it's cake. We can whip it out quite easy. So we have Z, Y. The overlap, the middle, is 0.70. Once you got the middle, it's all cake. So we got the middle. We now found the middle is 0.17. So now how can I find the rest of Z? Subtract it. Yeah, 0.40 minus 0.17 is 0.23. And the rest of Y is 0.35 minus 0.17 equals something. Um, 0.18. 
There? Very good. See how I'm doing that? Once you have the middle, you can find the other things. See that? And then how do you find out here, the outer outside of the circles? Add them up and subtract from one, yeah. 0.23 plus 0.17, which is 0.58. 1 minus 0.58, 0.42. Now we've got the whole Venn diagram. Now we can answer all their questions. It's still not easy. Now we've got to go through all their questions and do the dots and the union and the overlap and all that hard thinking, which I don't think I have time to do any more of on this problem. I'm sorry. I wish I had two hours with you. I'd love to go through all of them real slowly and carefully. I will be glad to do that in office hours. Come see me or Mr. Roberto will do that with you. He can do these quite easily, I'm sure. His hours are back there. Get the help you need, though. Make sure you're a master of these. Don't lie to yourself. Go back over these questions and make sure you can do them and do them and do them until you can flawlessly make them through. There'll be ones just like it on the exam. Questions to that point, I'm going to leave the rest on that, answering those four. That okay? So make sure you have this formula. That's the golden ticket for doing that. All right. They just came forward now on this problem with the word odds. Odds. Okay, so how is odds... Different than probability. Probability, we already know, is the number in favor over the number total. Right? But odds, instead of favor total, it's number in favor. It starts the same. Two, number against. Odds is like a debate, you know, like for and against kind of thing instead of four in total. So there's a subtle difference. Definitely want that in your three by five card. You wanna, wanna be clear on that. Um, all right. So probability is favor over total. Odds is favor versus against. So think about odds like a debate, right? If you have nine people in the room, maybe five are for an issue and four are against it. But probability would be five out of nine. So they, all, they both start the same, right? Probability and odds both start with the number in favor. They begin the same. The only difference is probability ends with total. Odds ends with against. So odds is for and against, like a debate. Probability is for and total. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. So when they say, all right, you're going you're gonna to do a... Uh, it's only one die, huh? I'm not doing two dice. I'm not going to make that big old six-by-six six box thing. That's for two dice, right? This is just one die that's being rolled not two dice. So this is just one die. And so what can happen with one die? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And what do they want? Two or six. They want a two or a six. So the probability of that, the probability would be two out of six. But the odds, they're not asking me probably, they're asking me odds two to four. But you can reduce that like you would any fraction. That's our answer. One to two. You reduce it just like two fourths reduces to be a half. We good? Does that make sense how we did that? Because there's two events that are for you and four ag that are against you, right? Out of the six different things that can happen, two are what you want to happen and four are against you. They're what you don't want to happen. Two to four. Reduce it like a fraction, one to two. Good there? So that's how odds is different than probability? All right. I'll let you think on that one for just a second. We're talking odds again. Give that a try. So we're rolling a single die, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And we want a number greater than one. So it'd be any of these, huh? Mm -hmm. So it's five 
two. So the number four, and then and then again, instead of four in total, like probability, it's four and against. So debate odds uh, four, five to one. one, five to one. That makes sense. So odds is not hard. It's just different, huh? Four and against instead of four in total. Okay. Ability. All right, try that one. Three red, six yellow, four green. Odds in favor of red. Give that a try. So odds, you want four and against. So instead of four in total, give you a second on that. All right, so four, three, and how many are against? Ten. Three to ten? What if they said probability? It'd be three over whatever, 13? Yeah, it'd be three over 13 for probability, huh? For odds, it's three to ten. Four and against? Good. You guys get the hang of that real quick. Does that make sense? Whenever they talk about two dice... And the sum, that's when you go, oh, yeah, yeah, the big old six by six thing, right? I don't know if I want to make that whole thing again. They want to have it on your three by five card. Big old six by six array. One, 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 two. So I'll, I'll, I'll do this real quick while you solve the problem. One, six, two, one, two, 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 three, two. Okay, so um, the odds of sum of five or eight, huh, where are those? So sum of five is right, right there. Sum of five. And eight is uh, right here. Sum of eight. How many in the five thing? There's one, two, three, four. There's four boxes, and here's, there's one, two, three, four, five boxes. So four boxes for a sum of five, five boxes for a sum of eight. So you want the odds of rolling uh, five or eight. So odds is always four, two, against. So there's five and four. There's nine things for you, right? Nine different results out of the 36 things that can happen. And what's the rest? 20, so it's 27? So it's 36 minus 9 would be yeah, 27. Huh? 9 to 27? That makes sense. There's 27 different things that would be against what you want, not being a sum of 5 or 8. Now, you can reduce that like a fraction, huh? Right? You know what I mean? 9 over 27 reduces to be 1 third, doesn't it? So it's 1 to 3 would be the final answer on that. Do you see how I did that? Right, good. What if they'd said probability instead of odds? It would have been nine. The beginning is always the same. Nine, but instead of over 36, over the total, instead of the 27 against results. Huh? And that would have reduced to be one-fourth. Is that good? Is it all making sense? Then diagram was... Okay. So they're saying the probability is nine over 100. What are the odds? And remember, probability is 4 over total, and odds are 4 and against. So they both start the same. Over 91. Or 291, or however they want to say that. Does that make sense? Because 100 total, 9 of them are 4, then 91 people must be against, or 91 whatevers. So probability is just 4 in total, odds is 4 and against. It's pretty easy to convert. See how we got the against, right? If there's 100 total and 9 or 4, the rest are against. 91. Good. This won't be hard either. All right, try that. 
They're saying odds is five. Sometimes they put a colon in the middle. I don't care how you write it on the test. Sometimes they make it like a colon, like sideways. You'll see that in the paper sometimes, the odds of a baseball game or football game or something like that. The betting odds. So if this is for and against, which is always what odds are, and probability, they're asking me probability, is 4 over 2. They start the same. First number is the same, always, for probability and for odds. Over 9, because 9 total, huh? 5 nines. Make sense? Good enough on that? So those are a little better reading the chart. Whoops. All right. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so... You don't need to read all those words. Basically, they give me a big old chart. Let's just talk about the chart. Um, it's, it's a bunch of people that are in either the Army, Navy, uh, Marines, or Air Force. So 32 people all together in the Army. 23 males, 9 females. Making sense? 29 people in the Navy, 22 females, seven, uh, males, 7 females. 10 total Marine Corps, 14 total Air Force, uh, 63 is the total number of males in this study group, whatever this is, and the uh, 22 females, total people all together, 85 people in the study. All right, so here come their questions. And in fact, I've already answered the first one. Uh, what's the probability that a randomly selected single parent, I guess these are all single parents, um, is in the Army? So if you're just going to grab somebody at random out of this group, and they're talking probability, by the way, we're done with odds now. We're going back to regular probability. So we just want the four over the total, huh? No more odds for now. Okay. Um, you want them in the army. So, so what first off, what's the total? What's the total of all the people? 85. 85, right? And what are the number in the army? That's the 32. If you divide that in your calculator, you get 0.38 rounded to two places. That's all they want, just army over total. Okay, I want to try this. So basically, woman in the Air Force. So again, it's probability, so it's 4 over total. You know the total is 85. Eight, no, nine, a different chart here. Oops, they changed the chart on me. 95, a little different chart. 95, that's the total. Can you get the 4 up there? Try that one. I think so. Let's see. Army... Oh, it's women in the Air Force. Women. Oh, I think it's just going to be the four this time because it's only the women. They don't, want, um, they don't want the total in the Air Force. They just want the women. And then they want you to divide that in your calculator and get a decimal. Does that make sense how I did that? Okay. Bless you. Okay. Um, Navy or Marine. So again, it's probability. So it's 4 over total. And total is, you know, 95 in this case, right? The total number of people in the study. How many are Navy or Marine? N yeah, Navy is 32. Marine is 9. Huh? Whatever 32 plus 9 is. 41, yeah, just divide on your calculator, you get a decimal there, Very good, is that making sense so far? 0.43. Is that what it is, 0.43? All right, all right, good. Okay, so this one, they're doing this um, thing with the sickle cell anemia, um, so basically, there's, the child has sickle cell anemia. If you, um, basically, if you read all these words, blah, 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 you'll see that, um, oh, capital S is the sickle cell gene, okay? Little s is the healthy gene. And um, you have to have double S to get the sickle cell anemia, it says. So it's one out of four. That's how I got one out of four. So one out of four results in that chart. So it's a, you know, biology chart like that.
one out of four would get it. All right. Okay. Survey of 100 people about their music expenditures gave the following information. 37 bought country music. 20 were teenagers who bought country music. 29 were teenagers. Find the following probabilities. Now, I've answered them all, but how in the world did I do that? The probability that a person is a teenager who bought non-country music. Let's think about this for a second. Well, before we think about it too long, let me just tell you. Um, notice there's two care. I can't spell care. Oh no, that's right. Characteristics. There's two characteristics. What, what am I talking about? Um, country music or not? Teenager or not? Do you notice they're speaking of two characteristics only? in this problem. Either you bought country music or you didn't. They're not giving any other options, right? It's just country or not country. And then they're saying you're either a teenager or you're not. They're not giving any other ca categories, like you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s. You know, they could have, but they're not. So really, they're just giving us two characteristics. You're either a, a purchaser of country music or you're not. And, or, and you're either a teenager or you're not. When you see that, you know what needs to occur to you? Venn diagram. Whenever there's just two characteristics, if there was three, there'd be three circles. Two characteristics, two circles. So they're not saying it, but you really have to do a Venn diagram. One of them is for country music, and the other one's for teenager, the two characteristics. And then we're going to put the different people in the different sections. Does that make sense? Like if I wrote 10 right there in the middle, what would that mean about those 10 people? Yeah, they're, since they're in both circles, they're teenagers and they buy country music. Right? If I put a 20 out here, what would you know about those 20 people? I'm just making up numbers right now. They don't really go there. 20 people who buy country music and are not teenagers because they're not in the teenager circle. Huh? What if I put a 30 right here? What would that 30 mean? 30 teenagers that did not buy country music because they're not, if they bought it, they'd be in the country music circle. They're not. So they did not buy country music, but they are teenagers. Huh? What if I put a 40 out here? What would that mean? They're not teenagers. Or did they buy yeah, music. they're not teenagers and they did not buy country music. That'd be me. All right. So, um, so where do they all go? Let's put them, let's follow the, the numbers and see if we can, you know, we want to get those four sections again, huh? And then we can answer the questions once we have the four sections. Uh, and the most important is the middle. Do we have this? 37 bot country, but, you know, country's both those two, huh? So I can't do anything with that right now. 20 were teenagers who bought country. 20's in the middle. You see how they're giving me the middle right there? 20 were teenagers who bought country. That's the most helpful piece of information up there. So now I can backtrack. 37 bot country. So this is 17 out here to make 37 total in the country circle, huh? Right, you see that? And um, 29 were teenagers. So nine out here who were teenagers who did not buy country, huh? And it was 100 people total surveyed in this little study. So I can figure the outside, right? 100 minus 17, 20, and 9. Is it 54? Or 45, did I do it wrong? 46. I think, I think it's 54, isn't it? Did I do it wrong? 46. Yeah, I'm still getting 54. Did I do it wrong? 54, okay. All right, so 54, 54 out there. All right, so now let's try to, now we're prepared to answer, but that's kind of tricky, isn't it? Notice on the exam, this gets so many people because it never says, hint, use a Venn diagram. That's hard to do. That you got to really practice that. You can do it though with some practice. Let's see. The pro find the probability that a person is a teenager who bought country music. Eight, oh, oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's an important non there. A teenager who bought non-country music. So where do I see that? That's the nine, huh? Yeah. Make some room up here. Totally. That's the nine. So 
So that's the 9. Yeah, that's the 9 out of 100, 0.09. Because that, that's, right, because they, yeah, they're non-country. They're teenagers, non-country. That's the 9, huh? Okay, next, next group. Um, country music or is a teenager? That's all three of these, huh? All three of those groups are either either buying country music or they're a teenager or they're both. Huh. So that, that's going to take practice. So I'm, you know, right now I'm the math teacher who's thought about this for the last, well, for a lot of years now, 40 years. I'm turning 50 this month. So like for 40 years, literally, I have been thinking about probability. So it's just like the back of my hand. So I'm just naturally leading you into the right thoughts. Make sure you do this. Of course, it seems reasonable when I say it, but make sure you do it on your own. You know, make sure with, without me kind of prompting the right thoughts that you, you on your own do these problems. It's really, really important difference. So um, what do we get? 17, 20, and 9 is the, right? Yeah, that's the, and it's over 100. So that's 0.46. And then uh, the probability that someone is not a teenager, not a teenager, all these marks I was doing. Where's the not teenagers? Here and here. Both those groups are not in the teenager circle, huh? So we need to go 17 plus 54 over 100. I assume that's 0. .71. And then finally, not a teenager but does like country music. Not, a, not in the teenager circle but does like country music, right? The 17, huh? Does that make sense? They're not a teenager, but they are in the country music circle. That's why it's 0.17, because it's 17 over 100. That good? Making more sense or making some sense now? These are a little, these are tricky. Was that actually really easy if you just kind of think carefully about what they're saying? They, you know... The Venn diagram in the last one was probably the hardest thing there is. All right, so let's take a look at this. So suppose that a single fair die is rolled. So just one die, right? No, no big six-by-six six chart or anything. Just one die. Find the probability that it is an odd number given that it is a two. Now, this section is called conditional probability. And what, what that always means is there's a condition. They're going to tell you some information, but not all the information. You know what I mean? Do you, you ever realize how probability is all about knowledge? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, technically. I mean, I, mean, well, I mean, I don't mean anything fatalistic by that, but I just mean things are going to happen, but based on how much knowledge you have is how random the event is. There's a sense in which nothing, I mean, too philosophical. That's what insider trading is about, for example. Let me just get back to real life practical here. What's insider trading? When somebody in a company knows that the company is about to do something that's going to make their stock go up, that person's not allowed to go invest in a stock that he has knowledge about, he or she has knowledge about. That's why that one gal went to jail, right? What's her name? Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Because she knew stuff about the company and then invested in it. That's called insider trading. It's illegal because you have knowledge. It's not purely random for you. You know the company's about to go up because you're at the you were at the shareholder meeting or the or the whatever the you know and so you're going to go invest real quick. Well, that's not fair to everybody else who doesn't have that knowledge. So it's illegal. But it's the same thing we see here. Probably is all about knowledge. So this section is all about that. They're going to give you conditions. They're going to give you a little bit of knowledge, and that's going to change probably. For example, before this last Super Bowl, it'd be a perfect example. The last Super Bowl was a very interesting, very interesting one. That was great. Now, what, what, if, what if I told you before the game, what's the probability that Patriots are going to win? You might have said 50% or 60%. But then after halftime, with the knowledge, if I said, okay, I'm going to tell you this now. How, you know, what if I DVR'd it, you know, and you hadn't seen it, but I DVR'd it. I said, halftime score, Patriots are down by 25 or whatever they were. What's the chance they're going to win now? You would have put it way lower, right, given that knowledge. And yeah, me too. Crazy. And we would have all been wrong. Um, but anyway, it changes the chance of things based on <coughs> knowledge, doesn't it? That's what we're happening here. So they're saying, what's the probability? You, ro you roll the dice. Something happens. You either got a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6, right? Now, if I just said, what's the chance you're going to get odd without any knowledge? You'd say, well, half, right? 1, 3, or 5. 3 out of 6, half. There's a half chance I'm going to get odd. That's right. That's true. Except... 
they're going to say, given, here's some information, given the halftime score, given that you did get a two, I got a two? You're telling me what I got? Yeah, they're telling you what you got. You got a two. Well, then I didn't get an odd. Right. The chance is zero. Zero. If you got a two, there is no chance you got an odd. Are you with me? That seems weird, huh? It's like, what are they doing? They're just, they just want to get the, the idea of given down for you. They're giving you a certain bit of information. They gave you the fact that you got a two. Well, if I got a two, there's no chance I got an odd number. That changes everything, right? That'd be like if I told you, what's the chance the Patriots won, and I gave you the final score? Well, you'd say, there's a 100% chance. You just gave me the final score, right? That's what they basically did. They gave me the, the final score there. Is that making sense? Let's try. So in a, in a way, the given stuff makes it easier because you have some information. It's not so random. So it's saying here on this one, find what is the probability that the sum, so we're doing two dice, right? I'm tempted to write that whole big six by six array, but I'd rather not. And um, I don't need to because they're telling me if the first die, there's the if, if the halftime score, if the first die was a two. So they're telling me what they got in the first die. That means we're in that row. I, I don't have to do the whole array. You know, I don't need it out here. I don't need all the rest of the array. I just need the 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. I know I'm somewhere in that one, huh? If they're telling me the first die. I rolled two dice, and I covered up and say, hey, guys, the first one's a 2. That they're giving me that information, so I know I'm, I'm in one of these six boxes. And they're saying, what's the probability that the sum is 5? Yeah, it's right there. It's 1 out of 6. 1 out of the six different things have a sum of 5, don't they? That makes sense? It's, in some ways, it's easier with the given. You know, if you get the idea of the given. We'll talk more about that on Thursday. We are done. So, we just finished 8-4. Eight, 8-4 four. Eight, four is all we finished. 8.4 will be due on Thursday. Have a good day, guys. If you have questions, feel free to hang out. If you didn't get an old exam, I've got them. I think I've got a couple old exams.